The beautiful sounds of a traditional wedding. It has become quite common for black South Africans to have a two-part wedding. A white wedding, and by white we mean a white wedding dress, but we actually mean a wedding like the one that white people have. And then we have the traditional wedding. Now, the definition of what a traditional wedding is is somewhat tricky. On the one hand, it is seen as a celebration of our Africanness. Which is a bit odd for it to happen on your wedding day, which is a once-off occasion instead of a day like Heritage Day. On the other hand, at its core and in its origins, a traditional wedding is a part of the wedding process where two ancestral lineages basically merge into one. It is a ritual whereby an animal is symbolically slaughtered to signify the merging of the couple into a singular bloodline. What makes these two definitions tricky to balance is because you can have people who religiously are opposed to the concept of ancestors, people who are opposed to symbolic slaughter of animals, partaking in a somewhat watered down version of this ritual. And this clash of spiritual ideologies is actually a big component of this topic. Now, back to the wedding day. One of the most iconic features of a traditional wedding are the outfits that are worn by the bride, the groom, and the entire bridal squad. Guys, can we please take a moment to acknowledge that the white all-stars are now a part of tradition? Please, and thank you. <laughs> the outfits worn on traditional weddings are generally cut from African printed fabric, which vary across cultures. And the most recognizable one for us as Southern Africans is the dark blue and white Sishwe pattern. This pattern fabric is very symbolic in a number of our cultures and... No. Wait. Actually. What we call the blue and white traditional Sichuan Shui pattern was actually introduced by Dutch traders and their use of it dates back to pre-colonial times. The pattern was made through a technique called resist dye which is characterized by a white pattern on an indigo blue background. It often featured floral motifs and the process was called bloedrek which is German for blueprint. And the blue dreck is on the list of intangible cultural heritage icons in Germany. And no, wait, actually. The Germans learned this technique after it was imported into Europe through the Dutch East India Company. It in itself was copied from a technique used by Muslim fabric makers in India. Typical patterns represented ancient symbolic designs in complex and symmetrical intertwining layout and each reflected the social class of the owner through their level of intricacy. You will often find that the patterns that adorn the walls of many mosques are usually in blue and white, so the fabric patterns themselves were a translation of the spiritual principles of Islam. But how can a geometric pattern be seen as spiritual? Well, for one thing, circles have no end and they are infinite. So they remind Muslims that Allah himself is infinite. And complex geometric designs create an impression of an unending repetition. And this also helps a person get an idea of the infinite nature of Allah. While the repeating patterns also demonstrate that in the small, you can find the infinite. A single element of the pattern implies the infinite and total and no. Wait. Actually. The earliest records of this resist dye technique date back to the year 645 in Japan. The technique was called Tutsukage 
and craftsmen were commissioned to create depictions of dramatic scenes and motifs on fabrics such as cotton and hemp as a way of conveying unspoken meaning and significance to important moments of life, religious and cultural celebrations. Later versions of this process would appear in Indonesia where wax was used instead of paste. And while indigenous fabrics like the kente from Ghana existed, it was actually Europeans like Vlisco and Dagama that would popularize what we have come to call the African print pattern. Now, back to our wedding. The traditional wedding outfit is representative of the change in technology. It was one idea built on top of another idea that was taken from one place and adapted in another place over a period that stretches over hundreds and hundreds of years. The assumption that we often make about technology is that it only relates to things like automated electronic machinery and artificial intelligence. But the truth is that at each point of the evolution of what we call traditional fabric was pushed forward by what was seen at that time as a technological advancement. And these advancements impacted not only on culture and spirituality, but how people understood themselves. And today, we are at yet another technological crossroads, brought on specifically by the cell phone, the computer, and the internet. We are now trying to figure out how to use these tools in navigating our beliefs and gain a better understanding of our spirituality while dealing with the very real dangers that these tools pose to our mental health. In this topic, who better to talk to than the original digital Sangoma herself, Kokomoyo. that level of comfort within that space you started out as a programmer yes right mm. did that help in making you less um, wary of technology actually it happened so backward is it i got my calling while i was doing sports management mm -hmm. so i was a star athlete and i thought i wanted to pursue that all my life really? it didn't work out because i had i didn't like understand the science of anatomy but as in you didn't want to no as in i would have preferred to be an athlete all my life oh. it's just that when you get to school you have to also learn the anatomy and physiology of why you're a superstar athlete <laughs> and i was less interested in the book side you know and i had all this energy so mm. i wanted to exert it in the more physical route mm. if it wasn't on the sports field it was parties it was the coolest thing on campus were doing that. So I just felt a lot and a rush of energy. Mm -hmm. I didn't necessarily know it was being directed to. So I got my calling during that time. Only for me to go to uh, heed my calling. Several months later, I'm back now. How? Mm. How am I supposed to be known? Oh, there's this person here. And when they left me, he's like, no, people will come. Like, okay logically how you know it's already a mission just traveling here from school using taxis mm. so this is like a white stricken area there's like farmers and that that's just about it mm. only for me to be curious about going on the internet and doing like drag and drop uh websites mm. i only went into programming and software testing after i started my blog really through the discovery of drag and drop websites is when i got curious about technology so you it was the situation that your guides put you in that exactly. pushed you towards programming i was not willing to do the pamphlet and there's a kokomoyo who can penis enlarge <laughs> or bring lovers back <laughs> or anything like that so i was i was not ready to do that besides i had like zero zero confidence yeah i come from school Mm. I've never met a Sangoma in my life. And literally my first reading was the first interaction I had with a Sangom. And that's now already two weeks before Gale Fetong. Because mm. it was because I was already reacting. Mm. So it wasn't even how my body was already getting before I knew who took it. Mm. So literally I did everything of mine literally backwards. Um, so yeah. Because of the low confidence, I had to find 
people like me. Mm. So I'm like, okay, I've got this superpower. What does it mean? Mm. Like, what does it mean mm. on so many elements? And I'm 19. I want to hit the streets and club and, mm. you know, wear the freshest kicks on uh, trending at the time. I had no compass of where I wanted to take my life, really. Mm. I just got abandoned by sports management. I really don't know what I'm trying to do with myself. So that platform allowed me to voice my opinions, use the 10 words of English I could understand and use to express myself. Next thing I know, the people that are going through the same thing. And I'm like, snap. So I'm not alone. Mm. And that's how the content created itself because it literally came from a place of I've got zero confidence. I don't know what to do. How do I navigate this? We found each other. I, I would imagine that when you were still starting making your own blog, people weren't as versed in African spirituality as they are. And what I mean by this is that there were less people who would discourage you because people weren't really interested. There wasn't that actually, much interest. Actually, yeah. But also to a certain degree, there were also certain healers that were already initiated mm -hmm. that felt like, why why should you talk about bungaka on social media mm -hmm. so also the language you choose to use i'm betty i'm shona i don't necessarily know how to articulate myself in those languages as mm -hmm. best as i can mm -hmm. in the english that we use in day you know in our daily mm -hmm. lives and now here i am i'm talking about upasa and i'm speaking in english or i'm talking about i'm i'm speaking in english and you see the comments there they're like and you're like okay how about you step into my domain and find out mm. you know because like now you're judging me based on how i'm presenting the information not that i actually know the information so there was literally scrutiny from all sides mm -hmm. now even then a lot of this is based on this belief that things are done a certain way mm -hmm. But there's this big gap between our predecessors and mm, us, mm, you mm. know, our elders. And there's with, with that gap, there's a big knowledge gap. Mm. Why is there such a void of knowledge and information between us? And people who are literally still alive today and have this <clears> knowledge, <throat> but there's it doesn't seem to have been any kind of handover of information. I don't know what it is about the African culture that we don't like to upskill each other mm -hmm. we literally would it's almost like i had to go through what i had to go through to be this person so you go do the work as well mm -hmm. whereas if you assist me i can get to where you are and with the energy i have i can go even further mm -hmm. but we don't think about it that way so even when it comes to it was a no when you listen to abu kobela speak They're like, I leave the important things towards the end because I don't want the child to abscond and I've shared my biggest secrets and this child is going to become an enemy tomorrow because they're going to be influenced wherever they go. So it's almost like there's so much safeguarding that goes on. It's both within the information that you know, mm -hmm. the sacredness of it, the impact that information has, mm -hmm. and also, can I trust you with the information? Mm -hmm. You know, so it's on different levels. But when it comes to like family dynamics, it's really, really paramount and important for our elders to teach us everything they know. Mm -hmm. Because now we're going to be upsetting the ecosystem in our in our cultural beliefs or our practices by virtue of Genza Poson Exatsibi. But if Kukunam Pulitzer every time Hira Mereko Pulayan, I'm expectant of it. I don't feel like we need to put a you know like if anything i am just going to get a tent because mm. i'm expecting the rain mm. so it's almost like we are we're set we're being set up for failure but for the lack of the information passing on mm. i i don't know what the culture is behind it i don't i can't really justify i mean for instance uh a, a brief a brief story my dad is born of a woman that had an affair within her marriage mm -hmm. she does he does not belong to the original surname that he grew up under yes. he has my dad has known for as long as i've had my calling which is like 13 years plus mm. till today that woman will never tell my dad that this is not your dad this is who your dad is this is where he's buried 
you understand that even with just a simple family dynamic of secrecy, we will not come out with the things that are going to help our own children like get rid of their own challenges. Imagine how much work my dad has to do or any African man has to do for themselves to be fit into the right lineage, mm. the right practices. Mm. For him to, if, if there's a strip of beadwork that he needs by virtue of that's who your people are, mm. my dad will never know and men like him will never know unless if he's determined enough to make it about his business. Mm. So it's really far bigger than just whether Ebu or any other, mm -hmm. anywhere. Mm -hmm. It's why don't we share? Like, mm. why do we feel like we have to hoard? And that's why we jump onto social media so that we can start by just putting the basics out there and then you see someone comment hey my grand used to do that i was always wondering why mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but does not feel like it's important to pass on the information it, it reminds me um the couple of when i st was starting with the podcast mm -hmm. and i was trying to investigate um the gift through my family mm -hmm. and my maternal family and i was speaking to my mother she's like yeah nah, there's no such in the family. Imagine. You know, she's never heard of anything. There's no one. And then the one time we were at a, I think it was a family gathering. Mm. Um, and I asked a cousin of mine mm. who grew up with my grandmother. Mm. Um, or rather was raised by my grandmother. Mm. And and I'm like, is there such a thing? She's mm. like, ah, dude. Nkono used to take us to Kosati all the time. Relo Eba, you know, we would come back with this and she knew how to cure this with mm -hmm. that so i go back to my mom and like but you said there's no such like ah, that doesn't mean anything i'm like what do you mean it doesn't mean anything she knew how to cure people how to help people with it with um you know indigenous indigenous medicine and i think it didn't gel with her mm. you know and i think this goes to another sort of subjects which is also very very volatile mm. and that is the secret versus the sacred. Yes. Which, and I feel like there's something we don't understand mm. about it. And I don't know what it is that we don't understand. Mm. But a lot of the time when it comes to don't speak about this, mm. don't show this, you know, it goes back to this thing of what is secret and what is sacred. sacred yeah. How do we, and where is the line? You know, that's, I think if you understand the information, its purpose what it's meant to do, how it's meant to enrich, mm. you know whether it falls under sacred or secrecy. Mm. And also, I don't understand why also it has to fall under secrecy because it's depriving a whole generation thereafter mm. of something that they were supposed to know. Mm. Sacred is understandable. You go to an entire program, whether it's initiation, huakomengi, uh, um, Mm -hmm. Wherever it is, you go there to go learn a certain skill set. Mm -hmm. You are welcome there under certain practices, processes, rituals that, you know, like officiate you in that space. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you're not going to take that information and put it, you know, out all willy nilly. Mm -hmm. You're going to respect that you yourself even had to be accepted in a particular way. Mm -hmm. Other people just walk in. They're not here for the same thing. So you're here to learn about the sacredness. So when you understand the sacredness, then you know that there's, you're, 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 you're um, a holder of information. Like you are now seen as this person who's a guardian of this information versus the spitefulness that comes out of secrecy. That's mm -hmm. very different because it almost goes back now to how do you feel about the conversation? Like your mom it was not even about whether this thing existed or not in the family. It was mm. about how she felt about it. Mm. And that's why she was advocating for the secrecy. Mm. Only to find that other people are more open to talking about it. Mm. And then now she looks some type of way towards, you know, her son. Like, Mama, why would you throw me off like that? Mm. Just, you, you should at least direct me. Because mm. you are not interested in talking mm. about it. Mm. Versus acting like what i'm seeing or what i'm dreaming about our family or what i'm interested in does not exist how many of our household are affected by the secrecy versus the sacredness mm -hmm. you as women we don't walk into um when you know it's oh it's deemed as a men only territory mm -hmm. 
you know, those are sacred. Those things are supposed to happen in their rightful acts. Mm -hmm. You don't just find just anybody in that space and there's processes and protocols to them. Secrecy, what processes and protocols are they associated with them? Yeah, um, I think it reminds me of, there was a day, I think it was three years ago, when you put up pictures that uh, during like and sure. everybody was like, oh, Kokomoi, there we go. How did you process that backlash? <clears throat> I thought it wasn't necessarily about what I posted. It was about who posted it. Really? That's what I felt. Really? Because if you go into, I can like bring out my Instagram and show you several pages that proudly have put them up there. Who were at the time, you know, beating me for putting them up. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like, because I had reached a certain level of my understanding of that process, mm -hmm. I felt I could share that. Mm -hmm. Perhaps they had not reached it in the light that I had. Therefore, now it's less taboo mm -hmm. to be putting it up out there. I put it down for the sake of peace. Mm -hmm. I didn't put it down because I felt like I was bullied. Mm -hmm. I just didn't want that noise in my page because everything else had had so much harmony to mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. and if anyone knows me they always associate me with teaching and mm -hmm. of the positive so i didn't want that turn of energy on the page yeah but on any given day i would repeat those actions i, I didn't feel like I was, it was it was wrong out of turn or anything because with each of those photos i wrote like short synopsis mm. to explain you know what was going on in like the lightest layman terms without even going into again mm -hmm. the secrecy or the sacredness of what's going on there. Mm -hmm. Also, again, why would Intuaso be something that's open to the public and a photographer is invited and, you know, you can take photos as people that are there. But the moment I put up a picture yes. of someone sucking on a goat, it's how dare you? It's like, then why isn't it private? invite why isn't just the in, if the family only and put your phones away like yeah. it feels like it's yeah. it's yeah. It, no no i i get that um because i used to get that with togo as well yeah, of course with, with the pictures people mm -hmm. were saying you know you are sort of invading a space and i'm like there isn't a single picture that i have on that page that you wouldn't have seen yourself thank you if you're literally just walking past you know, there's no way where I went behind couldn't Mengzawa to while they were, you know. I'm literally sitting with the crowd. At yes. any moment when I took that picture, there were 50 people around me with yep. their phones out. I'll even call you so that you don't miss the shot. You, you know what I mean? And that has happened that people were like, you know, take this picture. But why do you think you were targeted in that instance? Uh, I don't know. Maybe because I was very loud and very proud about it. You know, I didn't have a, I'm looking for people to support me mm. while I do this. Mm. It, it didn't matter what the feedback was going to be. I had a message to deliver. For instance, if you were a kid somewhere sitting wherever you're sitting, like how I was never exposed to Bungoma, and all of a sudden you're seeing a picture of something like this. Meanwhile, you have seen it repetitively in your dreams. It almost like links something mm -hmm. for you. Even whatever the caption is, it, it there's a light bulb moment. Almost like it starts sending you a certain mm -hmm. direction because you've been feeling mm -hmm. so alienated. So I don't know. I don't know. Maybe because I've been pioneering for, for a long time. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've been holding space for a lot of other people that didn't have the voice. And... Because I'm also, like, I refuse to be part of the communities, mm. you know. Um, I may know a lot of Sangomas. I have their contact details. I can see them whenever I want to. But you won't find me in a massive Sangoma. In a click. I, w I don't have clicks because I feel like they're very delusional. At the end of the day, we hate on each other within the click. Mm. So why should I... De like deceive myself into thinking I'm so loved by the people around me. Yes, there is genuine love in these spaces. I won't take that away from it. But but Dimbaka don't need, you know, the accompaniment. Mm -hmm. They they are fine on their own. Mm -hmm. That's why I've never needed to collaborate with other people mm -hmm. to get my message across. Yeah. It's only now with the new Lucidi podcast where I feel mm -hmm. like I I've, I've spoken enough. I'd love to hear other people's stories. Mm -hmm. And that's how I've chosen to do it. Yeah. I don't need a co-host or, a, you know, an affirmation by someone else. Mm. So I, maybe because I was, 
you know, uh, maybe what's the word? Not even unapproachable, but I maybe they felt like they couldn't get to okay. me any other way. Okay. I, I don't even know. Do do you think healers today are dealing with different spiritual problems within the community than our predecessors? Mm, for the most part, I feel like a lot stayed the same, but I feel like because the information is also out there, the clients therefore are different. Mm-hmm. Or maybe the lack of information and the lack of cultural emphasis. Mm. Like how a, a young city girl will walk in Dumbeni hoping to walk in Dumbeni in a pair of pants. Mm-hmm. Uh, back in the day, we'd know anything that has to do with culture. Mm. Yeah, you know, yeah, you know. Mm. So I think we are dealing with that kind of differences. Perhaps also with how women are so much stronger now, they feel like they're more independent. Mm-hmm. They also come um, with hopes of taking on male, predominantly male tasks or roles mm-hmm. within the family. Yeah. And for the most part, when I think back to my clientele, a large base of it is women. Mm-hmm. And after that one prominent woman in their family has come to me, the whole family has no choice. They're all going to come to me. Mm-hmm. So I find that also our households are damaged in the sense that they're not being led by the fathers or mm-hmm. father figures. Mm-hmm. So a lot of the education has to go through the woman and already she's dealing with so much. So she has to be a woman and a, 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 um, a man at the same time. Mm-hmm. Um, also, perhaps even with our celebration of being able to be a, a mastermind at mixing imiti or anything like that i feel like right now us having markets has taken away the empowerment of knowing imiti from it rooted really? where it's planted how it looks like when it blooms when it should be harvested now the default is to run to the nearest market whereas there's still factors involved there you know how was it handled plus katikupa mm. you know um it could be um by pathela bebatqoke kanjani you know you end up if you don't know that there's actual processes to everything you won't think about that a market to you will solve all your problems mm. and ultimately the same muti comes back into my practice and i wanted to have the same power as even hambile ngayo zikubela those things are very different true So now speaking about technology mm. we assume that we're talking about phones and computers and stuff. Sure. There was a time I'm a buy when you. Mm. Right. <laughs> I'm I'm imagining cuz I'm still investigating how I'm a buy came, came about. about yeah. And, you know, I've been planning a, an episode on this but I literally can't find the origins. Nobody sure. they literally just appear. You know, but I, it will happen in time. So crazy. So, I'm, I'm, I'm. I can imagine that when, however it is that they came, mm. the very first healers mm. to use them, mm. because also I'm sure there would have been a process as to why healers yes. would do this. Yes. Why is it a healer cloth and mm. not a tablecloth? Yes. You know, why are we designating this particular one to that fraternity? You know, yes. Mm. And so there was a time, I'm up by when you mm. and. The healers who started using them caught backlash. Yes, of course. For it, you know, and there were there's things like beads mm. as well. Mm. Although beads have been around for much longer, they're yes. made of different things. But yes. you know, the plastic beads and the glass beads but came much later. But also the patterns, later. also yes, yeah, and then the patterns. So, I want to know what makes a buy of beads nothing sacred is it the thing itself does mm. it have a spiritual quality to it mm. or is it does its spiritual quality come from its use i think because whoever came up with the concept of of ibai and how they classified it eka mundao eka sunwa eka munguni you know ibere kisa zwang zwang le zwang zwang um honestly i believe tools are an extension mm-hmm. irrespective mm-hmm. if you don't conjure up or meditate or 
focus on the energy within you to manifest something, whether kubita sedimu or to give karmata or to heal even by making beadwork for a client, mm-hmm. then it's like, it, I feel like it's a, it's a tool that carries energy to the next. Mm-hmm. But I don't think that ipai on its own can make me have badimu. Mm-hmm. So I don't think the power is within it. Mm-hmm. It does help to to wear the uniform for the respective spaces, mm. right? Besides the uniformity of how beautiful it looks and how it tidies you up because that's mm. funny, you know, uh, in terms of how we pre- present ourselves. But also for Sidi Museo, it's almost like it's a liceriti mm-hmm. because um, it, like, it, it makes you dignified in how it covers you. You know, mm. I've actually never thought about uh, the significance of Ibai in that retrospect, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, but for me, again, tools are an extension. Mm-hmm. It, 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 they don't make me mm. or officiate me. The thing that fascinates me about specifically Amabai is sure. that there was a time they were not there. Yes. Right. There was a time they didn't exist. And when they did come into existence, whichever time, however long, mm. they impacted the spiritual realm. Yes, they gave it color. This, this is this is this is what I'm 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 sort of trying to get at with technology and mm. how the impact that it can have. Because you know we can debate phones and computers and internet and whatever. Yes, yes. But I'm a buy show that something made here, man-made, yes. it's not a natural growing herb or anything, but something that an individual decided to do infiltrated how spir- the spiritual realm in how it functions to the extent where then Badimu w- sort of connect with it. Yes. And say, okay, from now on, we're taking <clears throat> this technology as yes. our technology. Also, mm. there's one that would sit in a corner and say I, I'd rather be sewing beadwork or in vunul or whatever it is that you use uh, someone would be saying I'm not interested in the conversation of the world I'm going to sit in the wilderness mm. and then there's that other answer that is like innovative by nature even in how I want to use candles I'm going to innovate this particular way of connecting with spirit on a higher level so by the way that beads came into into being and classified that this is for healers and everything i believe that there was certain collective of ancestry that came and sat on mortal and said develop something like this and call it this but the thing is about spirituality, it's ever evolving, it's mm-hmm. ever moving, it's mm-hmm. it's a constant ball of energy. Mm-hmm. That's why you could say, I don't know where originally it originated from that Masela Ade, mm-hmm. but now they're the most you know, you know, prominent, easily uh, easiest way to identify that this person is this and that and that because of how they've been classified and how um, they've infiltrated the healing space. So also... I think um, Amapai, they they did something that the natural products never could do anymore. Which is? For instance, I'm thinking Nehwapadua, like leaves or sacks Mm -hmm. or, you know. Cow skin. Cow skin, exactly. Mm -hmm. Those kind of things. Mm -hmm. And... But also for you to wear a cow skin, you have to have slaughtered a cow skin. Yes. So if you can, do not afford or do not have cattle at home, the accessibility also is is, is different. Mm. Whereas if we are going to create a product that is you can clothe your body, then we might as well also in, 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 invent one, mm. even for the spiritual realm. Yeah. You know, I, w- I would think it's the same also in the religious context because yeah. we didn't all... In the, in the making of men have these garments. Mm. So it, it made it a better and easier solution and also the upkeep, etc. Yeah, You know, we gave it the importance and the relevance of why do we revere them so much? Why do we respect them so much? And mm-hmm. why we wear them at specific places for specific rituals? I think we gave it that new connotation towards it, but I think it came purely out of 
um, designing this technology to technology at the end of the day is to make things better. Yeah. You know, stay out of the struggle and just one step closer to yeah. something being easier. Yeah. So I think that was that, that that's why the invention was there. And also I remember when I was looking for uh I also tried um searching for the origin of Amahia where mm-hmm. they come from mm-hmm. and I was fascinated by that now they are manufactured by foreign nationals yeah. which are Chinese. Yes. We we don't own our things. Yes. We, we are don't. the 100% consu- consumer but we do not own our things and that's why even the material they're going to sell us today we're going to accept it yet we are clothing the most sacred mm-hmm. of versions of ourselves i think can be the same can be said for candles certainly because there was a time candles didn't exist no we didn't know how to use those things but we found and and the, what what for me is 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 key when it comes to to candles is that the core idea was kept mm. it was just made more convenient yes yeah, so it was fire on the move yes yeah so we didn't have to make a bonfire just no horapela. that's why technology to make things better mm-hmm. so if i want to go secretly or privately in this fire in this bonfire inside of, in the mm-hmm. middle of the yard yeah. and i can feel a certain energy to it it's almost like i wish i can encapsulate this and go put it in my room and let's see if, what happens if i dialogue and i speak to mm-hmm. it because that's it's it's also a sign of technology advancing uh, yeah but why why do we think that now why do we think that spirit can't function through technology i think it would be very naive to to think that mm-hmm. considering my entire career lives on the internet mm-hmm. i can't show anything else maybe in a tangible space more than the internet mm-hmm. and i've touched a lot of people's lives. Mm-hmm. So that spirit worked through those mediums to find its people. So if I can do that with technology, why can't I speak to a candle and manifest change into my life? Mm-hmm. You know, why can't I pray for a candle and give it to you and you go use it for the X amount of days you need it mm-hmm. and you not find your deliverance from it? like everything is a tool is an extension of you transfer energy through these mediums so it ends up not even being about the tool mm-hmm. it's about the intention that leaves me directed to you it, it reminds me of the, the, there was a time we used to make fun of these um TV pastors who would say touch the TV screen while I pray for you and you will get lol <laughs> come on <laughs> So they were on the right track. Is, is, is I, I believe so because the weirdest thing is when I was growing up, I was watching TV with my late uncle, and there was this magician's. There was a show on TV. I, I feel like it's very, very, very old. I can't even think what it was called. And one of the instructions was there are like blocks on the screen. Pick one and put your finger there. The craziest thing is that. It opened the one I had picked on. I'm thinking this show is playing globally or nationally. We couldn't have all picked Pick the, the same, same box. box. Yeah. So, you know, that's just in a- addition to what you're talking about yeah. with the pastors. That, like, literally, guys, it doesn't matter the, the medium. I could say to you, here's a bottle of a two-liter um a coke bottle it's clear no wrapping and i filled water in it and i want you to pray using it or to blow in it and all of a sudden i see your whole life story in it hmm. it's not about the tool it's about my faith in what i am saying or what i'm trying to make come true in that moment so the 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 channel or the medium of communication is not as relevant as we think it is not because right now when i was going to um 2009 my gobela gets a call from her cousin mzala le ka re teng re teng e go pon chekele ke na le situation go ntlong a o chekele i'm sitting there what you mean zamala ta masapo a ka wena i go fetch the bones how oh, wow. they reading each other off the phone I'm dumbstruck because I'm thinking what It's is so this? ironic that you are saying this. 
that's how, that's <laughs> how I you don't understand like you don't understand so you had the same questions I was my mind was blown and I'm like is this possible it's like but what do you mean is it possible because you just saw me do it hmm. little did this woman realize that she gave me a medium that I literally am notoriously known for yes. when people were fighting Hori, how dare you go and go consult the person over the phone do you understand that it's such a strong medium that ever since COVID hit our the shores of the world I haven't had a single um, face-to-face reading. I will have a face-to-face reading if I have to administer physical aid to you. Mm -hmm. But till today, since COVID last year, I do not speak to people face-to-face. And I never sit in Dumbeni without clients. I don't advertise. I sell convenience of the spirit. Mm. And if you find your niche, stay there. Mm-hmm. Don't try and do 125 things at the same time. You won't see the silver lining in each one. Mm-hmm. So that one thing that I thought was like, what is this mm-hmm. at 19 is something that at the age that I'm at is like the only thing that I use to sustain me. I think we imagine spirit as this, you know, beautiful ghost sitting with you in a room <laughs> and when there's technology because it, it forces your mind to imagine spirit moving through the phone ka wifi <laughs> and telecom I get a visual how did, how did it get <laughs> like how did it get there and you know and wh- which band is it 5G is it 3G <laughs> which, which you know where, where does the so it's, it's it's yeah I think this is why we, we try to imagine how spirit yes. functions and this is where then we hit the wall as to how do you how can you read someone over the phone or those people who call on radio and and the person exactly. reads them on the radio and says you know this and this and this and then people exactly. are like ah, it can't be real unless i'm sitting with you exactly in a room and i think t- there's a there's an extent to which we we can't really fight the changes and i'll give you an example a couple of years ago i was at a lobola negotiation mm-hmm. for a, a this guy that i knew mm-hmm. and afterwards i asked his aunt about you know the whole the money on the table thing because mm-hmm. uh, you know i was like hey, that's a lot of money you mm-hmm. know? so in in terms of to carry around yes you know and i'm unsafe. like why don't you it's unsafe mm-hmm. you know why don't we just eft the thing and then she was like it really doesn't recognize EFTs. I'm like, oh. Are you going to put a slip there or put a slip? This is the thing. <laughs> we, so we had that discussion like, no, but Imo won't recognize mm. EFT. Then I'm like, but now. And I was like, okay, I get that. Mm. But we just put money on the table. Mm. Before, people needed physical cows. Yes. So we had to transition from yes. that. Yes. From physical cows. Because no, it was inconvenient. Yes. It was not practical for us to have 10 cows and bring them to your yard. We had to transition to money, physical money. And now physical money is becoming obsolete to an extent. Yes. You know. It's virtual currency. And, but it's it's like we don't believe that it's going to, that EFTs are sacred. That's the other thing. Yes. Is an EFT sacred? You know, we'll, we'll, <laughs> that, what happens once I've deposited whatever 50, 60, 100,000 yeah. into your family's account? You know, because it's, it's, I feel like we need to, as a generation, then come up with a new way of saying this is how we keep Tuatamahadi sacred. You can go EFT, but then where is the ritual part of yes. it, of presenting yes. that? And that's the thing is as much as we can online read each other as much as we want, mm-hmm. there's going to be certain practices that re- re- like we have to return to the center mm-hmm. of why we diverse in the first place. Okay. We cannot avoid Hopatha in the physical sense mm-hmm. at those sacred spaces, those natural elements. We can't avoid that. Mm-hmm. We can't send my prayer to a waterfall when I'm sitting here. Because they're supposed to make contact with my person, Mm -hmm. right? So, um, we can't move away from certain African belief practices. Mm -hmm. Those are always going to remain. They're going to need for us to arrive in the right conditions, in the right settings. Mm. Because at the end of the day, there's a certain language that Badimu uses. Mm-hmm. 
and we have to go through it those mediums modimamo mm-hmm. as much as we may try to bring as much technology or convenience to things spirit does only does, doesn't speak logic mm-hmm. as logical as you might think that but it is here it also arabatli easy rabatla mm-hmm. connection connection means i must walk barefoot i must do whatever i need to i must fetch that and bring it here whereas why didn't you just bring it here in the first place it had a purpose for to why find leon dula la paya which i don't understand ga phatli wa my figure le ga phatli wa my figure la so if i had just brought it here what about that collective there so you can't avoid certain things mm-hmm. that's why lobola those kind of things i don't believe they will ever cease to keep the originality okay because it serves the purpose of firstly we're combining two different families mm-hmm. so in that practice firstly we believe in different ways of facilitating the same process mm-hmm. we if we don't sit down and do these things that we have to do so vula ne milomo la pe 18 mm-hmm. if we don't do those things then there's going to be a lot of offense offensive behavior that we do even in the spiritual context mm-hmm. because we are not acknowledging those that came before us and why they have allowed these people to come to be together mm-hmm. if we could take my partner for granted and say ha re kholetse go tsgweng so it doesn't matter mm-hmm. meanwhile he has a lineage of kings in his family mm-hmm. if i'm going to decide with my family that we're going to do it the english way or the modern way will never pay homage to that ancestry that he walks with mm. that make him the same man that I feel I want to build a life with mm. so I, in turn I rob myself because I did not invite those gentlemen to come with so okay now while we on that mm. about things that are very necessary to do and things we can't especially like corporate yes when you do a telephone consultation sure you never meet the person it makes me think of the process of a hokant Yes. Right. So where how does the 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 symbolism of gukanyisa come into play when it's a telephonic consultation where you're not seeing the person you know because I'm I'm I want to first understand gukanyisa is it to pay for services or is it to activate those services to work is to show respect for the ancestors of the person who's coming to divine you at the moment. Okay. Yes, that's what the purpose so, is. So then when it does not involve a physical interaction or or upas in a common space, yes. does it still carry the same importance? I that's why if you have a certain collective of ancestry, they won't allow you to trade in that way or mm-hmm. divine in that way mm-hmm. because they still need that physical offering mm-hmm. to hit the floor. and to ingene endumbeni mm-hmm. because they are of that nature mm-hmm. there's other ancestors that that's the least of our worries we want to make sure oh, by the time you're going to administer help to this person everything else is within our guidelines and what we want you to do i might have an ancestor who is more dominant in administering mt at ogulapabantu more than the one that divines mm-hmm. those can be two separate ancestors mm-hmm. but the one that divines is is not, is, is not so strict mm-hmm. but lola phayo i will never dare ngene into mbeni ngoku bruk or bypass something nonchalantly i must do everything down to the detail even if it's tedious mm-hmm. so it's about also understanding the type of ancestors that walk with you and lead you because that's what's going to tell you where your boundaries are tinas pelelala we don't use technology to divine we don't use technology even in the in dumben we don't want you to light candles sifuna umlilo ukuthi uhlale ube khona that's why at msebenzi yamadlozi this always has to be a fire we can't light candles in the space of it has a purpose in itself not just to dry the drums okay or to cook the food okay. in itself fire in its in its own element is for healing it also wards away e- uh, evil spirits when you are in the wilderness and you are surrounded by uh wildlife you light a fire to ward them away so it has many purposes whereas for someone else who is not so inclined in ubungoma in that regard would think but we don't need a fire here's a gas stove we can just cook whatever 
you know, RBI the Coupe Colsa thing. That fire in itself is almost like it's a protective element for Lom Sebenzi Osuenzai. For as long as the fire is burning, Lom Sebenzi Satkubek. There's in in the past couple of years, mm. maybe five years, the the online feminist movement yeah. has done a lot of work mm. in in it has impacted on especially gender roles mm. or questioning of gender roles. Mm-hmm. And also part of that is um, you know, the queer community has sort of felt a bit more comfortable. It's not necessarily more accepted, but sure. they have more comfortable, especially online. Mm. Do you think these processes, these movements are, are impacting the spiritual realm in some way? Um sure. But I think to that I could speak of how everyone feels liberated enough to act within their true image of self. Mm-hmm. If I had an ans I've got a lot of male ancestors mm-hmm. that could have either moved me towards being more lesbian mm-hmm. or a very strong woman. Mm-hmm. You know, my guides guide that for me. Mm-hmm. They didn't want me to become a lesbian. Mm. Someone else's is so strong that I cannot be a strong woman. I have to be like a lesbian woman instead. You know, almost like those people were liberated enough to be able to act out their sexuality, their spirituality through how their ancestors portrayed them. Now, when this conversation says, be bold, be proud, hit the streets as as truthful and as raw as you are, it allowed for people to do that. Some people can easily say, why does it seem like Izangoma are running towards the world of Ungoma? These people have always existed. It's always been around the question, were they safe enough? Were they comfortable enough to show us that? Kona abo mkulu that are very butch. Mkulu, you could be as you are, mm-hmm. a man's man. Mm-hmm. But the moment you are the softest person ever. You walk differently. You have no control over that. Some of those remnants stay with you to a point where you start even questioning your sexuality. Am I into guys or am I into women? So a lot of our spirituality ends up even affecting how we live our lives on a daily. I could dream of myself always as a boy, but I'm a girl. Why? Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm confused now. Why am I seeing this image of myself? Mm. Meanwhile, the true essence of myself, whether Edlozini or within my natural body, I am a guy. I'm holding on to this image of a girl because I came with the body parts of a girl. Meanwhile, it says, be a woman, yes, but dominate in the sense that you are the one who's going to pursue other women, no longer men. So these movements won't impact how spiritual the spiritual realm functions, but they will impact how we perceive yeah, because ourselves. I, yeah, because I don't believe that anybody can influence the spiritual. This is actually my question. Yeah, no. Yeah. I no, I don't think that. Because at the end of the day, I can attempt whatever it is I want to attempt. Mm. For this to happen mm-hmm. or for this change to be in effect. Mm. If they say no to that, that's it on that. So I have I don't have the power to go up above and beyond my ancestors and if they if they're the gatekeepers that say no to that then there's nothing furthermore i can do so you can't influence spirituality to a point where you are going to change how it is because for me to prosper and have longevity in whatever it is that i want to you know effect change in i should have the right yeses in part of my lineage in part of my ancestors to shed light on this path because I won't always be this bright-eyed person who knows when to turn left, when to turn mm-hmm. right, when to make these decisions mm-hmm. and when to take effect. So I don't think that we have the power to be the ones that walk before our ancestors. That's why we're led by them. Mm-hmm. That's why it's called a calling. You don't make the call. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I never thought of it that way. Yes. So I don't think, I think it will be, you'd be very egotistical of you to mm-hmm. feel like 
you're such a pioneer that mm-hmm. you can attempt at something. Let me try online reading. Let's see. Then I mean, what you're going to do, force having online readings where your energy is dormant, where you get all the things wrong about the people that you're consulting. No, you abandon ship because you realize the energy is not traveling with you. Mm. You go back to the mediums that you know that your energy rises now on command because this is what has been accepted. Is, is that how you know you're doing the right thing when you're... Exactly. That's how I'm like, for you to be able to do something with so much longevity, there is a yes that was given to you. It didn't have to be a very verbal one, mm. but you would have seen with your arrangements every time you try to hook up with your next guest, you know, you mm. would see with the signs that, Ah, yeah, yeah. Why must it always be such a schlep for me to get these things done? Mm. Why must I go 12, three times, four times to get something done? Mm. I mean, like, it's like simple. Just plug these microphones in and switch on. Why? Then you realize, what's my block? You sit back. If this yeah. is, if they say it's as easy as plugging these machines in yeah. and having a conversation, then why is it an extra effort for me? Yeah. If it's yours, you will find the right guests. You will, your conversations yeah. will flow. You will get the accolades and the awards and the recognition yeah. because it carries a bigger message than what you thought. You mm. just envisioned it. We'll sit down and we'll converse. I've, so, I'm so curious. Mm. How you started the podcast and what's happening now are two different things. Very, two very, different things. Very. Because that's when you understand that you are being led to sit within these conversations yeah. and for far bigger than what you think you're asking. Yeah. It's, it's funny you say that because what I've learned over the years is that there are certain topics I'm not ready for. Exactly. And sometimes I would force it. Literally the last um, <laughs> conversation I had, Mm-mm. you know, I knew I was forcing it, this oh. particular topic. I knew I was forcing it. I couldn't get hold of the person. Mm. And, you know, and I forced and I forced. And eventually, we, even the day I was supposed to go, we couldn't find a place. We could, you know, it was just problematic. So eventually we sat and we started talking and then 10 minutes and I knew I wasn't supposed to talk about this. Thank you. I, I, was, I realized like, I did not know enough. I had not done enough research. You couldn't back it up. I'm drowning in this conversation and I don't even know where to take it. Like we literally recorded um, for an hour. Afterwards, I knew that I wasn't going to post Pub- yeah i'm not going to publish this and so i speak to the afterwards when i'm packing away the mics and stuff and he's like and we didn't talk about this and this thing and, and like, i'm like that's the thing we were supposed to talk about he's like why didn't you say it? and he's like but i can't talk about it now i'm like why not he's like no i f- there's a there's a ritual i have to go through first thank you before i can talk about it because i'm not yet ready to talk about this thing he has to go collect his yes he literally he was like i have to go go vendor there's a ritual I have to attend before I can talk about this thing. My point exactly. You know? So now it, it makes me think about us as just general people on the internet. I'm into African spirituality. You know, I'm lost. I'm trying to figure out. And then I come across this gogo mm. talking about this thing. Mm. And then I come across this mkulu talking about the same thing. Mm-hmm. But they're saying two different things. Yep. How do I, as an ordinary person navigate learning about spirituality online when you have situations where two people your favorites your fabs of course are talking are contradicting each other Mm. like how do we use this technology in a better way to learn more about spirituality you have to teach your spirit discernment Mm -hmm. because first and foremost irrespective of whether they are contradicting each other the one thing they will always have in common is go speak to your guides Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, even if they're contradicting each other in terms of processes or which one is the most important or which whatever it is, mm-hmm. they always revert back to mm-hmm. Sam. You go have the conversation, whether you pray, whether you are pastor, or you do both. You have to have firstly a relationship with your ancestors. If you're gonna use so much data to go learn about information on ancestry or culture, to whom does it serve? Mm -hmm. So you have to go back to the people that you are trying to connect with, being your own collective of ancestry. Mm -hmm. Because they're the ones that are going to show you between these two people, which one is right for them. Mm -hmm. You could find that even neither of your faves are on the right 
conversation for length. you for you at that time especially for your ancestors mm. you can go learn those tricks you can learn that every sunday we do a money ritual but that's not how your ancestors do the money ritual really so then you are manifesting you're using all this energy you live and stay these things don't work it's strange because we think it's universal no if if if, if a healer comes online and say we're going to do i would like to do this particular thing and i had never thought of but my people won't want to that's do that that's why there's 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 clans there's there's families that don't use impe for mabapatla they don't use it there's some people who use impe they get a headache because their people their collective of people do not use that medium That's why I always live by try everything once. Mm. Once you'll know. Whether to go or to go go moy. That energy will tell you which mm. gets like gala no my keep it moving. Pray with a candle. You know, fight with a red one. Try everything once. At the end of the day, you will know. You will know how many interviews have you done? Countless. Mm. That one interview that you did before me said, "Sorry, sir, we're not. It's not happening," mm. because you had done it once to know that this is the right energy level yeah. that a podcast is supposed to give me. Yeah. That one time when it didn't register, it said no. Mm. It was your problem that you were forceful. Yeah. But the energy, the spirit said no. It also said your poor virgin ears this information is not ready for you not even you are ready for it mm. like you have not reached that level in your life to be asking about this hence the right key points come up when you're packing up your equipment cuz like yeah you were in a big person's shoes so even if 10 of us sangoma say Here's the washo nay combination of palas and nay in nay in we can put them out there like everything we can put it out there if you try it once and your spirit says don't you dare ever again you don't even have to finish you can still be putting this muti together and your muti falls up, falls down la uchala ukuthi your mixer khona your seven eighty ku and it falls face down after all that energy you used to talk about 17 ingredients you first them from different parts of africa different markets you literally put your back into this ubuze ba nqere ba ni like who did you speak to in you attempting to do this so what you're saying is that if if i'm online and i'm reading stuff and someone has an interesting topic or they're suggesting pray with this and pray with that mm. you can try it but pray about it first definitely or ask permission i definitely. want to do this 30 day candle challenge or this manifesting ritual for 7 days that's how you grow your spirit you don't grow your spirit with the ritual that you're going to do really no you grow your spirit with having that seamless uninterrupted conversation with your ancestors because it's important to you and you're always going to be asking is this boyfriend right for me is this job okay should i accept this deal the source remains the same it's mm. always going to be the same collective of people you're going to ask about different things all the time up until such a time ukokomoyo says here is a new invention in terms of how to play with rainwater You go back to your collective. Why hasn't the rain water appealed to you all along? Now because your fave says we are going to use rain water. Like and also if you don't know the depth of who your people are culturally um via your lineage historically, who are they as a people? Like banisapula, ke ba kwena, ke ba like what are they? Because now this ritual that your fave is subscribing You know she's going to be doing very topical surface level mm. but why not as a person who makes it rain like culture really it says why would you be using rain water when you make it rain mm. and also why would you be using it like that if you make it rain means that you must maybe the water must fall on you why are you collecting it mm. so it, it's discernment you'll have the spirit of discernment 
because there's many different things. There's people that are making soaps uh, with MET, uh, what literally any invention anybody in this in the silence and the stillness of their minds created. There was a call for that. Mm-hmm. They heeded it. Mm-hmm. It does not mean just because it says "nainzi poyotando" or "yomsebenzi" that it's going to work for you. There could be literally out of seventeen imiti lapa, only one a humble and nezlo zlako. But you want to go support your faith? Kela, like even if you go by it, begon sam to go zanvoko kona mukul. Nyak sebenzi sa logu na nyak amgel. Because when you pass, you are saying. The money must come. The water <laughs> must come. So who are you talking to? Who you did not speak to initially when you started using and prescribing yourself to this? So there's a disconnect. Mm-hmm. So let them contradict each other on the social media platforms. Mm-hmm. Let them do things differently. That's why it's meant to be different because there are so many different cultural groups literally in our country besides the world. And then you find yourself that you're a mix. Yeah. I'm half Zimbabwe and I'm half Bedi. So I've got two nationalities to take care of. Mm. One of them does not use imiti period period. Mm. One of them says I am a big advocate of umut. How do I marry these things together? Mm-hmm. If I don't have a relationship with my ancestors, I will not know which to avoid and which to hold on to. How to strike that balance? Because I'm not speaking to the source and the source being your own ancestry. Not mine. You can't speak to mine. Mine told me to come up with this brilliant idea. Hmm. What about yours? Togo za koko. Marcos. Is there anything more I could add to this? No. My name is Vasom Zingande. Thank you so much for joining me on yet another episode of The Journey Guantu. I wish you courage, I wish you light, and I wish you all the very best on your journey. Makwande.